Tonight, we are tracking severe weather across Texas with strong winds near Fort Worth tearing through the town of Jacksboro. Governor Greg Abbott is already directing emergency crews to be on standby. Rescue and response teams are ready to handle any reports of damage or flooding. Governor Abbott says the state will monitor weather conditions and deploy emergency resources as needed. Meanwhile, wildfires in Eastland County have torched at least 60,000 acres, according to officials. And an hour outside of Dallas, fires forced families from their homes Sunday. This as South Central Texas braces for severe storms tonight with strong winds and hail in parts of the state. And we will begin our weather coverage in Central Texas. That's where our Dylan Scott joins us now from downtown Austin. Hello, Dylan. What do you see in the skies? Good evening, Brad and Dr. Cross. We are in a parking garage seeking shelter right now in downtown Austin where there is a tornado warning that has been issued by the National Weather Service here in Central Texas till about 10 o'clock. I'm going to step out of the way and let our photographer Brent show you kind of what we're seeing right now. Some very dark, thick clouds as our meteorologists tell us the storm is moving into Central Texas right now where we're going to see heavy winds, potentially very dangerous hail at the very least, along with this tornado watch as well. So if you are outdoors right now, please seek shelter, head indoors. This is not the kind of storm you want to be outdoors for. Now, earlier in the day, we did speak to some local residents about this upcoming severe weather. One family told us their flights had already been canceled out of Austin. Another gentleman said he was trying to, yes, run errands before this big storm hit Central Texas. A smart decision with conditions worsening through the evening. Kind of wanted to just get it done real quick before it started raining again because it was raining earlier. You know, the sun came out, so I was like, let's knock out all my errands today. You're not really used to driving in this type of weather if you're not, you know, from one of those rainy parts. So I like to get it done before the rain. Never want to get caught in the rain or anything like that. Obviously very smart and wise decision right there. Again, a tornado watch issued by the National Weather Service here in Central Texas till 10 o'clock. We're just starting to see some of these conditions worsen. Some rain is now starting, some heavy winds, potentially hail in the next hour or so. So if you are outdoors, please seek shelter, head inside, stick with us here at Spectrum News. Our meteorologists doing a great job keeping you informed throughout the night. Right now in downtown Austin, Dylan Scott, Spectrum News 1 Texas. All right, Dylan, thank you very much for that. Meanwhile, down the road in San Antonio, folks have already seen power outages throughout the day. CPS Energy reports as many as 14,000 customers were without power early this morning. Officials say rain mixed with dust buildup on the insulators can cause utility poles to catch fire, which is apparently what happened and led to some of those outages. Today's severe weather also moving through parts of North Texas. That's where we find our Michael Lozano joining us now from Dallas. Michael, I know that severe thunderstorm warnings are in effect in several counties in North Texas. What can you tell us? Yeah, well, Nicole, right now, like what you're seeing in Austin and San Antonio, not, not the biggest issue right now here in Dallas when it comes to the weather here. No rain right now. The winds have picked up in and out throughout the day. We've seen rain throughout the day, but nothing too severe just yet. People are going about their day right now along 75 here in North Dallas. The rush hour, cars driving by. We've seen people going on runs too, trying to get everything they can get done before this storm really comes through this part of Dallas here. TxDOT warning drivers that if it starts to pour, that not to seek shelter under bridges, obviously because of flooding concerns there. But right now, we are going to be on the lookout for any potential uh, issues out here. We drove on uh, Interstate 75 towards Dallas a while ago. Uh, traffic per usual on a regular rush hour evening, but there have been a few accidents here and there, not really related to the weather per se, but more so just kind of what you see on a, a daily basis here. But those will become more of a risk and more of a concern as the weather starts to worsen here. We will continue to monitor the situation here in Dallas and Fort Worth and be sure to bring you any, any of the latest details when it comes to accidents or downed wires or power outages or even just the tree limbs falling down. Those are all things that could be a concern for individuals out here. If you have a car, a hail definitely is a concern here. So being sure that you 
put it under some covering, whether it's in your garage, other an awning, anything that can protect any of your vehicles is something that you may want to consider while you're out this evening before going home. Um, but right now, like we said, business as usual for most people here in Dallas as of yet. The weather not too extreme right now. We've had rain throughout the day, but right now the rain has calmed down. We've had a wind kind of pick up here and there, but you can feel in this weather that there is this prime ingredients for that severe weather that we could be seeing in the next few hours, and we will continue to bring you the latest as that develops. I'm live in Dallas, Michael Zano, Spectrum News 1. I know you will, Michael. Thanks so much. Stay safe. Meantime, wildfires in West Texas torched nearly 95,000 acres. The largest group is the Eastland Complex fire. Three more fires have been added, bringing the total to seven. Now, I want you to take a look at this is video from the scene there. That group of fires has burned more than 54,000 acres. Officials say more than 140 structures have been destroyed, including several homes and businesses. At last check, those fires were only 30% contained. Right now, meteorologist Megan Campbell is going to join us with the very latest. Megan, we've got these wildfires. We've got severe weather across much of the state. What do our viewers need to know right now to stay safe? Yes, what they need to know is that this is rapidly intensifying. We knew it all along, and it's playing out exactly, unfortunately, how we anticipated. So what they need to think is, uh, where is my safe place? And definitely stay tuned with us all night long. So let's go ahead and get to the skies of Dallas. We want to check in there because that's where we've seen the most activity. So here are those low lying clouds and we're getting some of those wall clouds reported. You can see some of the raindrops there on the lens, but a dangerous situation now as we get into Decatur and Denton County. So here is a look at our potential effects. These are what we're focusing on tornadoes. Of course, we've already had many of those warnings and hail. We've already seen some over an inch strong winds, of course, in excess of 60 miles an hour into North Texas and definitely lightning flash flooding. Not the biggest threat, but this is where we are focused in on right now. This tornado warning we have into Denton and Wise County. Now I've been tracking this all afternoon. This leading edge continues to show some circulation and they are reporting a dropping wall cloud as we go into Decatur and Denton County. So this is a very dangerous situation as it swings up towards the north, but we're watching this entire line. You can see we do have a severe thunderstorm warning just to the south, and literally any of these can spin up as everyone contends with them further on. Let's go ahead and track this cell with you as we go forward. So we are looking into pecan acres there at 511 into Justin at 522 Gainesville there up near the state line at 527 Denton, a very densely populated area coming in at 533 Flower Mound. Our friends there be very cautious, hunker down. If this continues past its warning area, you need to be safe at 537 Louisville coming at 543 the colony and then Frisco at 550 and beyond. So this is what I'm talking about. We're tracking the inbound and outbound winds and you can see it's behaving itself down towards the south. That green not really crossing into the red. But as we venture north, that's where we're seeing this tremendous mixing. You can see it into Decatur there and then a whole lot of it as we go north into Gainesville. So that is our concern. You have to take this seriously. Of course, we're only about 24 hours into spring and here comes Mother Nature, right? So we will continue to keep you updated as we go into the night. But of course, this area is our focus right now. But we have warnings emerging all the way through central Texas. Here is a look at a few of those winds. We've already seen up to 47 miles an hour. And here's a look at how everything plays out. And I'm pretty confident with how everything is aligning. So this is really what you're going to see into tonight. So at 6 p.m., we have that line starting to move into Fort Worth, Tarrant counties taking it into Denton County. And then as we go from 7 p.m. on, we're looking at 8 p.m. Dallas County, Collin County into Rockwell and Kaufman. We are looking at the southeast quadrant. 
with the biggest hail possible at two inches. You could see everything. Those magentas still popping up at 9 p.m. And moving forward, it will continue to blossom into nightfall. So at least rain estimates around an inch into central Texas. But this is the outlook and what we saw upgraded today. So moderate zone into central Texas all the way up into Waco. So we'll continue to give you more updates. All right, back to you. All right, Megan, thank you for that. A rapidly developing situation, fast moving storms. So everybody, please uh, take care and keep your eye on the radar. And here on Spectrum News One, the severe weather is already causing flight delays in North Texas. DFW International Airport has had nearly 300 delayed flights and more than 300 cancellations. At Love Field, nearly 200 flights have been canceled or delayed. We continue our coverage now tracking severe weather across Texas with strong winds near Fort Worth tearing through the town of Jacksboro. Also, a new tornado warning has been issued for Monte County in North Texas and in Central Texas. Severe thunderstorm warnings are in effect for Williamson, Travis, Hayes and Blanco County until 6 p.m. <laughs> Governor Greg Abbott is already directing emergency crews to be on standby. Rescue and response teams are ready to handle any reports of damage or flooding. Governor Abbott says the state will monitor weather conditions and deploy emergency resources as needed. Meanwhile, wildfires in Eastland County have torched at least 60,000 acres. That's according to officials. In an hour outside of Dallas, fires forced families from their homes Sunday. This as South Central Texas braces for severe storms tonight with strong winds and hail in parts of the state. And we will continue our weather coverage back in Central Texas. Dylan Scott, who is now in downtown Austin, watching the system as it moves closer to the city uh, center. Dylan, what are you seeing? I do. It looks like rain behind you in the hills to the west of Austin. Uh, you got to be sensing that uh, the system is about to hit this center of the city. Yeah, good evening, Brett and Dr. Cross. Like you said, it continues to rapidly increase here. I'm going to step out of the camera as Brett, our photographer, gives you some shots of what's happening behind us. You can see the wind is intensifying here. Uh, we're starting to see some precipitation, some rain, which could potentially eventually lead to hail as this system continues to move in here, as our meteorologists have been telling you throughout the day. So Austin really getting some of these elements now that's going to intensify and get stronger in the next couple of hours. So again, if you are outdoors right now, please see shelter, head inside, away from all of these elements that we are really seeing to rapidly intensify. I'm meteorologists saying we haven't had this kind of intensity potentially since 2015, so it could get potentially pretty ugly here in Central Texas. Now, earlier on today, we did speak with some local residents about this upcoming severe weather. One family told us their flights had already been canceled out of Austin. Another gentleman said he was trying to run some errands before this storm hit. Really a smart decision with conditions continuing to worsen throughout the evening. Kind of wanted to just get it done real quick before it started raining again because it was raining earlier. You know, the sun came out, so I was like, let's knock out all my errands today. You're not really used to driving in this type of weather if you're not, you know, from one of those rainy parts. So I like to get it done before the rain. Never want to get caught in the rain or anything like that. Absolutely, and as I had said, it continues to intensify here in downtown Austin. We're in a parking garage right now seeking shelter from the heavy winds, a little bit of precipitation that's only getting worse minute by minute here. We'll continue to keep you updated, but for now, live in downtown Austin, Dylan Scott, Spectrum News 1, Texas. All right, Dylan, thanks very much. We can certainly tell that the winds are picking up behind you. Uh, right now, meantime, down to the south in San Antonio, folks have already seen power outages throughout the day. CPS Energy reports as many as 14,000 customers were without power early this morning. Officials say rain mixed with dust buildup on insulators can cause utility poles to catch fire, which indeed took place and led to some of the outages. Meanwhile, a deputy sheriff has been killed in dozens of homes 
homes have been destroyed as wind-driven wildfires rage in West Texas. Nearly 95,000 acres were torched. The largest group is the Eastland Complex Fire. Three more fires have been added, bringing the total to seven. You're looking at some of the damage and video from that wildfire. Now, that group of fires has burned more than 54,000 acres so far. Officials say more than 140 structures have been destroyed, including several homes and businesses. In the last check, those fires are only 30% contained. Switching gears, four days of confirmation hearings are underway in Washington right now as President Biden's history-making Supreme Court nominee faces the Senate Judiciary Committee. In her opening statements, Judge Katanji Brown-Jackson vowed her judicial role would be, quote, constrained. Julia Binbrook has more from Washington. Take a look. Please raise your right hand. A historic moment on Capitol Hill. Judge Katanji Brown Jackson appearing before the Senate Judiciary Committee as the first black woman nominated to the Supreme Court. I stand on the shoulders of so many who have come before me. The 51 year old Jackson spoke for 12 minutes on the first day of her confirmation hearing, presenting herself as a woman of faith and family and American values. As she spoke of her children and her husband, he brushed away tears. And in an effort to inoculate herself against Republican attacks expected in the days ahead, branding her as an activist judge, she presented herself in the mainstream of American jurisprudence. I decide cases from a neutral posture. I evaluate the, the facts and I interpret and apply the law to the facts of the case before me without fear or favor, consistent with my judicial oath. In addition to being the first black woman, Jackson would also be the first federal public defender on the nation's high court. It's not easy being the first. Often you have to be the best in some ways the bravest. To your presence here today, your willingness to brave this process will give inspiration to millions of Americans. They will. People gathered outside the Supreme Court to support Jackson's nomination. Three Republicans voted to confirm her nomination last year to a federal appeals court, but it's unclear if she'll receive any GOP support now. Some Republicans used Monday's hearing to complain about how Democrats treated Brett Kavanaugh when President Donald Trump nominated him in 2018. We won't try to turn this into a spectacle. Other Republicans signaled they will use the proceedings to brand Democrats as soft on crime. Josh Hawley of Missouri said that he will ask Jackson about sex crime cases where he said she issued lenient sentences. The White House called his arguments misinformation. Senators begin questioning Jackson on Tuesday, but with the Democrats in the majority, it would take a major stumble by Jackson to not get confirmed. In Washington, Julia Benbrook, Spectrum News. Back here at home, severe weather is moving through much of Texas, including North Texas. That's where we find our Michael Lozano joining us now from North Dallas. Mike, I know a new tornado warning has been issued for Cook County. Folks there are being told to shelter in place. What more can you tell us about that and other things happening there in North Texas? I mean, obviously right now that is a concern and right now they advise people in that area in, in Cook County to take caution, be sure to be indoors, find a st strong structure within your home to be in at the moment. That's a concern that many counties here in the North Texas area, including here in Dallas County, are going to have to take Justin, into consideration at this point. Right now here in the Dallas area, it's not too extreme. Right now they, uh, everything is kind of normal and business as usual. Okay. Uh, per se here along 75 uh, during a rush hour. It's normally a time that you see a lot of cars out here. We've seen people running about uh, going on runs, riding their bikes, going for walks. And so right now people are trying to get in their little activity before the rain really comes here. Uh, we've had rain here in the Dallas area for most of the day, but thankfully uh, hasn't been much of an issue. But TxDOT advising those who are driving if that rain really starts to pour and that flash flood becomes an issue not to hide under bridges or find shelter under bridges. That's not an ideal place to be. That's where that water will really accumulate and become an issue. Uh, as of now, we really haven't seen any major reports on accidents involving the weather here, but uh, per usual on a rush hour day, 
there tends to be a lot of traffic along 75. It's something we saw a couple of accidents here and there, but those are things you're going to need to take into consideration, especially when the rain starts to come and the potential hail becomes a factor as well. Uh, right now, things remain calm. The wind picks up every so often, uh, but we're hoping that things kind of uh, remain pretty calm here as well, but we'll be on the lookout for any potential changes.